in our effort to find a weak acid that will work as a buffer in blood, here's where we sit. We titrated carbonic acid and found that uh, it is a diprotic acid, and we note that there's a mixture of A and B in blood, and we would expect there to be quite a bit more B than A, because that's where the blood uh, 7.4 is closest to. We also found that bicarb has a very high concentration of blood at 25 millimolar, so the capacity is going to be good, especially on the acidic uh, buffering. But we're troubled a little bit by the fact that the pH 7.4 is slightly outside the buffering range. So what's the deal? Why is it that we use bicarbonate and carbonic acid as a blood buffering system? Well, to understand this, let's go on to the next page. We're going to skip over the top and come back to that a little bit later. And I want to just lay out what is going to happen in your blood. Let's reiterate a couple of compounds that we just talked about. This is bicarbonate, and there's a lot of it in your blood, about 25 millimolar. And this is carbonic acid. I'm drawing this the opposite way for a reason. I'll show you in just a minute. And this is approximately one millimolar, maybe a little bit more than that. Now, this species, this set of species in your blood is going to react as a buffer to the challenge of acids and bases. Let's consider what happens when uh, protons increase. If I were to challenge my blood with protons, and that can happen a lot of different ways. It can happen by the overdose of a, an acidic drug like aspirin. If you take too much aspirin, uh, it's an acid and the protons stream in your blood and they're normally gonna start to bring your pH down. But here's what happens. If we challenge our blood with protons, there's a lot of bicarbonate around, there's the idea of what we call the Chatelier's principle. And that is if you increase the reactant of any reaction, what happens is the reaction shifts to stabilize uh, the equilibrium. So what happens in this case is that the bicarbonate is going to neutralize the protons and prevent your blood from lowering its pH too much. Now that's just standard neutralization that we talked about with buffers. But what's the problem is that that will lower the concentration of the bicarb and raise this concentration and that's actually going to lower the pH, and we don't want the pH to change at all. Now here's what happens. We can actually adjust the pH of our blood through the bicarbonate carbonic acid system because carbonic acid, unlike just about anything else in the world, has this unique property, and that is it can break down into water and CO2. And CO2 can simply go out in the lungs. And what that means is something incredibly amazing about human physiology. And if you didn't know this, it's really important to understand it because it's critical to what happens in the emergency room. And that is that blood pH can be controlled by breathing rate. It's really astonishing. You wouldn't think those two things would be related at all. But here's the deal. Lower breathing rate is going to lead to lower pH. Why is that? Well, if you stop breathing, and I'll tell you some circumstances where that might happen in a minute, but if you stop breathing, then the CO2 in your lungs starts to build up because you can't get rid of it, and that backs the system up, and it backs the system up all the way to release protons, and that causes your pH to go down. So if your pH is too high, your your breathing uh, control system in your brain will slow your breathing down 
and allow the pH to be brought back down a little bit. Higher breathing uh, rate, on the other hand, will uh, decrease the number of protons and therefore increase pH. So this can be caused by a lot of things. Um, let's think about a couple of things. Choking or drowning. Anything that's going to prevent you from breathing well. Emphysema. Um, what about things that depress your breathing rate, like a heroin overdose? Uh, we can actually cause massive problems with our blood pH if our breathing rate is not correct. And the flip side is true as well. Um, higher breathing rate can lead to a higher pH. And this can be caused by a couple of things. Um, artificial ventilation, that is, if you go into a hospital and you need um, a, vent, a ventilator because you're not breathing well, you can't breathe on your own, if they turn that up too high, it's going to make you breathe too fast, and it can actually cause a higher pH in your blood. Another thing is hyperventilation. Just, you know, if you are spooked or into a, you know, if you get in a car accident or something, you're uh, stressed out, you breathe too fast, that can cause a higher pH. These things actually have names, clinical names. Higher pH is called alkalosis, and that is when your pH is greater than about 7.45. And lower pH is called acidosis, and that's when your pH is less than 7.35. So there's a very narrow window around 7.4. And not only is your blood pH controlled by buffering, as we've talked about, through the neutralization of bicarb and carbonic acid, but it can also be controlled by breathing rate through Le Chatelier's principle and the open buffer system that we talked about above. So that's the end of how buffers work in your blood. It's very complex. This is a tough chapter, but uh, we're going to now move on to the second question, which is how do you predict the protonation state of a molecule?